Hello everybody, this is Karov Joshi from ChessUniversity.com and today we will be continuing our free video course on 1D4 openings everybody should know. We will overview the Baltic defense this time. So the Baltic defense is reached after 1D4, D5, double queen spawn opening, c4, the queen's gambit, and here black plays a somewhat unusual move. But let me give you a little bit of a history on that. So in many of these queen, uh, queen's gambit defenses, black has trouble, to some extent at least, for how to develop his light squared bishop. It's not always clear how black should develop that bishop and properly use the bishop. Well here with the Baltic defense we have a situation where black takes a somewhat radical approach and decides to just trade off that bishop right away. So the Baltic defense is actually the move bishop f5 here. Very unusual with the simple idea of trading the bishop for the knight. So it's definitely an opening that can take white out of opening preparation, uh, especially if they've never seen this kind of opening before. Um, but let me tell you something, while it's not the best opening for black, and while it may be a bit dubious, it still has its merits and you know white should know the basics of how, how to approach this um, as white. And an interesting fact is that legendary grandmaster Alexei Shirov played this several times during the 1990s. I think he played it uh, four times during the 1990s and scored three out of four. And that's a pretty strong score as black. So, you know, while it's not the most sound opening, it definitely has its merits and so will take a look at the basics of it. Oh, and I should also mention that the Baltic defense has a couple other names. I think there's a, I think it's called a Grau defense or a Sahovic defense, but Baltic defense is its main name. Okay, so after bishop to f5, let's look at some moves here. Uh, as white, we should go ahead and play c takes d5, trading the c pawn for the d pawn. And the idea is that if black takes back with the queen, we can play the move knight to c3, developing a new piece with tempo. And tempo in chess simply means the value of one turn. In this case, you can say that white gained a tempo. We gained a turn because black is forced to make some unproductive move with the queen because the queen is hanging, the queen is attacked, right? So black is forced to respond and basically waste one turn, which is why a move like knight to b3 develops a piece with tempo for free, you could say. Um, if you had played some other developing move, that may not be the case. But yeah, knight c3 is definitely the best move here for white, and I would say that white is already doing a good job here. White is much better after the queen retreats. For example, queen, let's say queen to d6. Well, now you could even play e4, and you have full control of the center. Uh, what black has here could be considered an opening disaster. And so black normally does not take that d5 pawn right away. Instead, black continues with his own plan, which was of course to trade off that bishop for the knight. So that's the main continuation. Bishop takes b1. Here, we could take on b1 right away, or we could insert an in-between move. Um, in this position, both rook takes b1 and queen a4 check are played, but queen to a4 check is considered to be slightly stronger. We get to develop our strongest piece with tempo. It's a check. 
And after this check, the common response is pawn to c3 to block this check. And now we can simply play rook takes b1, capturing the bishop. And obviously he can't play c takes d because the pawn is pinned by the queen. And so the common move here is queen takes d5. After queen takes d5, there are a couple of moves that I think are good for white. Uh, you can play moves like e3, uh, perhaps even moves like pawn to f3 preparing e4. There are a couple of good moves here, but I think that the easiest way to play the most uh, straightforward approach is simply knight to f3, developing yet another piece while protecting the d-pawn. And that frees up our queen a little bit because our queen was actually tied down uh, to the defense of that pawn, right? The d-pawn. So knight to f3 helps out our queen. After knight to f3, the most common move for black is knight d7, which again develops a knight and enables castling for black. Uh, he probably should not castle right away because, you know, a pawn could hang. But maybe in the near future he'll castle queenside if he wants to. But he can also castle kingside. After knight d7, uh, white can try to be aggressive here actually. Because castling queenside doesn't seem to be the safest idea for black. But at the same time, castling kingside is not an option for him. So trying to attack his queenside, trying to compromise his queenside is one idea for white, and I think it's a good idea here. So the way you can try that out is by playing a move like b4, simply starting a pawn storm, right? b4 with the threat of going b5, and trying to undermine that c pawn, trying to open things up uh, on the queen side and weaken the pawn structure on the queen side for black. So we can go b4, and the best idea for black now is to play knight from g to f6 and really try to get castled kingside as soon as possible. Otherwise, uh, you know, he could find himself in some trouble here. After knight g to f6, we can play a move like pawn to e3. Suppose he plays e6, and in the near future. Uh, white can play moves like bishop d3. White can also play maybe queen to c2 and then bishop d3 or bishop c4 and then get castled. Ultimately, white ends up with some advantage. Um, he has a solid center, has extra opportunities on the queen side, and black still has to figure out how to get castled. It's not the worst opening for black like we've seen. Um, it doesn't give black any clear counterplay, but at least it seems to be borderline playable. And as white, um, you will acquire some advantage as long as you play nice principled moves, such as the ones we looked at. To recap here, after bishop to f5, we recommended that you play c takes d, and on bishop takes b1, insert queen to a4 check, developing your queen, after c6, you recapture the bishop, and once his queen lands on d5, you can go ahead, play knight f3 to free your queen, play principled moves, play active moves, and yeah, I think that as white, you'll have a good game. So I hope you found this overview of the Baltic defense useful. Uh, hopefully the material was easy to understand. And... So all right, let me ask you a question then. Are you ready to test yourself on this introductory opening material? Well, you can find out now by taking our free quiz on chessuniversity.com. Uh, you can simply click on the button to the right of the chessboard below our logo, or click on the link in the description below the video to go ahead and take the quiz. Also, if you found this video useful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our other awesome videos on YouTube as well as 
our courses on chessuniversity.com. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you at chessuniversity.com very soon. Take care, guys. Bye.